Hello and welcome to this video on the Unified Event Viewer on the Firewall Management Center. I'm Alex Tadashev, a technical marketing engineer with Cisco. So I want to go over some tips and tricks and just usage of the Unified Event Viewer, which is new in Release 7. I'll be looking at Release 7.3.1 for this video. So first it's over up on uh, uh, Analysis and Unified Events on your Firewall Management Center, FMC. So you can see it's a grid view. It shows you all the different event types, that, uh, or a number of them anyway, that you uh, would normally have to go to different event views for. But the Unified Event Viewer unifies these views. So you can see there's a number of columns here. And now we can add or remove columns. We can resize columns. To add columns, we click on the little column icon on the left on top of that uh, column header. And you can see all the columns you can add. Some are checked there with the default columns, but you can add a number of columns, quite a number actually, to this view. So to do that, you can scroll down the list and look for them, or you can use the search. So search is quite handy. You can just type in uh, some term have in the column and find those particular columns rather than have to, to scroll all the way down and find those. So for instance, I want to add the encrypted visibility columns. Just type encrypted in here, and, and there are the columns just show up in the list, so I can check those. Now I want to show you also what the little icons mean next to the column names. So you can notice there next to the application protocol column, there are five little icons there. Those correspond to the event types that that column supports. So not all event types populate all the columns. You can see some columns only populate uh, for a few different event types. And for AMP Cloud, for instance, you see that those uh, only supports malware events. So once we've made the selection there for columns, we can apply. Now it'll add those new columns in over on the right. You can see there's the encrypted visibility columns and the snort ID column I added. Now once you add those, you can uh, move those around. So if I don't want the Eve column play over on the right, I can just drag those over to the left somewhere, put them wherever I want them. Which I normally would do. Once I add a column on the right, I want to pull it over typically into, into kind of a more visible area. Uh, now you can also uh, fix these columns. So if you notice, the left two columns here on this screen are, are fixed, right? So I scroll left and right, they remain, the time and the event type stay there. You can add more columns to that fixed area over there, or even remove the ones that are there if you want. So by dragging it just a little bit farther left, you can get that source IP column right over into that fixed area. So once you do that, you notice it's fixed as well. So now as I scroll over, that column's always visible. You can actually do that on the right side as well. You can fix columns on the left or the right if you want to. So let's put that source IP back where it came from. You can resize the columns as well. So if you have a column that you know isn't going to use very much real estate, you want to just uh, clean it up a little bit, give yourself a little bit more room for more columns, you can do that. Pull some of those right columns over make them more uh, visible. Let's scroll down and look at some other features of the Unified View. So if I find an intrusion event, what we'll see is something interesting happens with that particular type of event. So if I click on the intrusion event, it will highlight the associated connection event. There are two events that are generated there, a connection and an intrusion event. You can also click on the connection and it would highlight the associated intrusion event. Now for any event you can expand it and see the details. There's an intrusion event, we'll expand it and see all the details with that event. You can see uh, the event type and such. There's the rule itself. Now within this we can even scroll down and see the packet information. So the raw packet information that Snort captured is available here in the unified event view including the packet bytes. And if you move on to another event type, just below that, you'll see a security-related connection event. And expanding that will give you all the information there. So you can see things like the source country, security intelligence category, etc. Okay, so one of the most powerful uh, features of the Unified Event View is the searching capability. To search, all you have to do is hover over a field in a column and you'll see there are three dots show up to the right. So if I go to IP address for instance, you notice there's three dots that show up to the right of that cell and by clicking that I can uh, get a menu here and do things like add an inclusion or an exclusion to the filter so I can include or exclude events with that value. Uh, IP address gives you the ability to do the same for source or destination IP. So by clicking include it adds up to the search up in the left you can see and then I can click apply and it will restrict the view to just events for that source IP. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But there's much more advanced searches you can do with this by combining these things together. So if we add items from different columns, let's say we add the source IP here 
and then we add the destination port. Now you can see it added both those criteria up in the search. So this IP and the destination port. So that's an AND, right? So I'm only going to include events where the source IP and the destination port match. However, if I add another IP address here to the inclusion, that is an OR now. So it's either source IP and the destination port. So the, the IPs are or together and the port is ANDed. So items and data from the same column are an OR operator and items from a different column are an AND operator. So you can combine the ANDs and the ORs there to get the search you want. Now this can be particularly handy when it comes to event types. So we'll clear the search out, we'll add a connection event type, we'll click on the three dots there, add the inclusion. Now if I click up on the event type, you know, so it gives me a chance to add additional items in there and shows you what you can add in there. So I can say, oh, let's show me connection events, intrusion events, you know, and malware events, for instance. So those are all ORs, right? So any of those types of events will now show up. If you want to remove connection events, just remove those, apply, and now it's just intrusion and malware events. You can also save those queries. So clicking the little magnifying glass on the far left brings down the saved searches. See, there's a couple that I've already created. To add a new one here, click Save Search, type in a name, and when you're finished, click the check mark to the right. Yeah, it's pretty easy to bring back one of your searches. You can see, we'll just click on the interesting host there, bring it back, and uh, you can also add, overwrite, or delete those searches as well. You can also save column sets. So we had some column sets we created, we modified that, but I have some I've already saved. So I have one for Eve fields, intrusion fields. So uh, you can have a number of different column sets for different types of events you want to look at or different views you want to have. And you can save those and easily bring those back. You can see I have my Eve columns there. So let's talk about the time window. All these events are time-based events. So they happen at certain times. And the events you see are determined by the time window. So here on the right, you can see the default time window is a fixed one hour time window, which is what we've been looking at. So you can change that. So you can change the time window, of course, to whatever fixed uh, area you want with the uh, quick links there or by using the calendar and the start end times. You can also update it by using the sliding time range. To do that, you can pick the sliding window. So it's always going to be the most current events going back for whatever you pick for the window, an hour, three hour, minutes, seconds, whatever. You can use those uh, presets as well. So once you do that, if you use, a, again, a sliding time window, every time you refresh, you're going to see the most current event at the top. In this case, I have a last three hour window. And every time I refresh, it's going to refresh putting the newest event at the top. Now these events are coming in very fast for this host, so it's the same events. But uh, as you can see, that that's going to basically be giving you an updated live view as you're refreshing. You can do the same thing with a fixed time range. You can use by using the now link over on the right. That will bring up that end time to the current time. That gives you effectively an expanding time window. So it's going to start at a certain time. But every time you click now, it's going to update that fixed window to be the current time. So you can have kind of an expanding time window there. Now, one view that is new to the Unified Events view and very, very exciting is the Live View. Live View is just like it sounds, a live view of events. When you click that, this window will automatically constantly update now with the newest events at the top. So pretty handy for uh, if you have a search especially. If you do this with all the connection events, uh, they're just going to scroll and it's not going to be much use, but combining with a search is quite handy to see what's going on right now in real time. If you scroll down, you notice on the right it says uh, it's paused and it has a resume button up there. But as soon as you scroll, it's going to pause that view so it doesn't scroll while you're trying to view events. It also pauses when you expand an event. So if I expand an event to look at the details, you know, it's up in the right, it went to pause again and shows you a little resume button. Uh, you can do that for a few seconds, but if you pause for more than, say, 10 or 15 seconds, uh, it's probably going to start missing events, right? So if you resume now, you go back to live view, but your current event list will probably have a gap in it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, live view is nice to get an idea of what's going on, but if you want to make sure you're seeing all the events, probably want to use one of the other time windows rather than a live view. Okay, so I went back to a fixed time window now, and if you notice what happens over on the left is when you go to the window, you'll see the events build there. You notice it's a maximum of 10,000 events you can show in the unified view, and as that loads, you can see those counts change. 
So to look for a specific event type, there's another way to do it other than, than going clicking down on the event type. If you hold down either the command or the control key, and depending on Windows or, or Mac, and click on one of those icons above, you can hover over, you can see summaries of the events, but to see a particular event type, you just click on the event type icon, and you can see those get added to the search. So that's another quick way to see a certain event types. Notice that also when I restrict the event type to those two events, the total count goes down quite a bit from 10,000 because this is the total of this type of event within that time window. Okay, another cool thing we can do, this is a little tip and trick, is let's say I find an intrusion event and I'm interested in context around that event. So I go to that event and go, wow, that's interesting. How can I find some context? If you click the three dots next to the time there where it occurred, you notice you have some options there and one of those is select time around that event. So plus or minus, basically seconds or a minute or a couple minutes. So let's I do, do the select around five seconds. So that's plus or minus five seconds from that event. Okay, well now it's just gonna show that event, but let's, let's remove the search then, look at all the event types around that event. So this is quite handy. Find me the context around that event with all the other event types. So in this case, maybe some connection events make sense to me or some other blocks or events add initial context to this event. So pretty nice way to zoom the time window into just events around a specific event of interest. Another feature of the Unified Event View is the ability to download a CSV of the events you're looking at. So by clicking the little download arrow there next to the events, you can see we got a CSV. Clicking on that will load that in Excel or whatever your spreadsheet program is and you can take a look at the CSV of those events. And that's my tips and tricks video for the Unified Events view. Get out there, use it, and let us know how you like it. As always, happy snorting!